Why am I sitting in a wood box? I'm not. I'm sitting in my next aquarium. Some of you may have seen a video we put out recently about the newest plywood aquarium we have here in the fish room. This 200 gallon cube tank measuring three feet by three feet by three feet. I'm immensely proud of this aquarium and how it turned out. And while I wasn't able to record the entire construction process, I did want to circle back and share an instructional video on arguably the most important step. All right, you might wonder, hey, if this is made out of wood, how can we make this an aquarium? And the answer is, we're gonna waterproof it. And today, I'm gonna to show you how you can waterproof your own wooden aquariums. Before we start, I should note that this video assumes you already have a properly constructed wooden aquarium. Keep an eye out on the channel for future videos where we will actually dig deep into that process. But for today, we're just going to focus on the waterproofing step. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is give it a good sanding with a 60 grit sandpaper. And I recommend using a palm sander to really, you know, speed things up. And you're not trying to get the wood smooth. You're actually trying to add grit to it. You're trying to rough it up a little bit with the 60 grit, add some texture, some surface area for the waterproofing epoxy that we're gonna use to really get a good grip and take hold. Okay, so we gave it a good light sanding with some 60 grit sandpaper and a palm sander. And we made sure to hit every surface that the epoxy will be put on. Uh, next step is easy. Uh, just vacuum up the dust, the sawdust, and give it a good wipe down with a uh, wet cloth and just get the surface nice and clean. Okay, supplies we're gonna need. First up, you need the waterproofing epoxy. What we're using today is Pond Shield. We've used it for several projects and it has a long proven track record in the hobby for DIY aquariums. Next you're going to need some mixing cups and some stir sticks. You're going to need some roller handles and the rollers themselves. Uh, get as thin of a nap as possible. Uh, that means the as little fuzz as you can. Uh, some paint brushes. Uh, a drop cloth, uh, gloves, and tack cloth to uh, clean up some dust before you start going. Now for a lot of these tools like the cups and the paint brushes, I get disposable versions because this epoxy is it's permanent. Once it sets, it's very messy. It's very hard to clean off of your tools. Okay, so we got the pond shield out. We got our measuring cups. Something else we're going to use is this denatured alcohol. This is optional. It helps thin the epoxy and makes it easier to work with. Uh, I like to use it on the first coat. You can or cannot use it. It's your personal preference. I think it helps on the first coat. You definitely wanna wear gloves because this stuff gets messy and it gets everywhere. And the formula is pretty straightforward. It's just two parts of one, one part of the other, and like a quarter cup of the alcohol. The instructions laid out pretty easily. So let's go ahead and get to mixing. If this is your first time doing this, then I highly recommend following the instructions to make the smallest batch possible, rather than trying to mix the whole kit at once. The critical element to remember here is that the epoxy will start to cure after a while. For me, it becomes unworkable after about 20 minutes, sometimes a little sooner. It depends on how you mix it. So you should start with a small batch to make sure that you don't waste any and you can use it all before it cures. And then after that first coat, based on your experience and your comfort, you can mix larger batches. And on that same note, you should be prepared to apply the epoxy as soon as you're done mixing. You should have all your tools on hand and ready to go. Once mixed, it's actually pretty simple to apply. You can paint it on just like regular house paint. Just keep in mind the ticking clock that started when you mixed the epoxy. You only have so long to work with this. Some of this first coat will actually get absorbed into the fibers of the wood, and that's what we want to happen. 
but later it might appear as though you didn't put as much on as you actually did, and this is just fine. Okay, so we have the first coat on, and it's been about three hours. We've let it dry a little bit, but it's still tacky to the touch, so this is a perfect time to get another coat on. And what we're going to focus on this time are the seams. We're going to use fiberglass cloth to reinforce those and add some really good structural integrity. And one of the best tips I can give you for this step is to get the fiberglass cloth that comes in rolls. These are already cut to be strips. If you get the square sheets of cloth, you have to cut strips out of them. And the fiberglass just starts falling apart and it becomes very hard and messy to work with. So after you've measured your seam length and cut the cloth to size, you'll come through with a new batch of epoxy. And we're going to use a paintbrush to apply a generous coating of the epoxy against both sides of the seam. And then we're going to press the fiberglass cloth into the epoxy using a straight edge tool to really get it in there and make sure it's flush with the wall. After which we'll come back with a paintbrush and apply another generous coating. This is where you do not want to skimp with the epoxy. You really want to soak the cloth. Two hours later. All right, so we got some fiberglass cloth on the seams here. So now we're gonna do another coat on the rest of the interior and see how it uh, looks after that. Something important to keep in mind here is that I'm doing all of these coats within a few hours of each other while the epoxy is still tacky to the touch. You don't have to do this. You can actually take your time in between coats. But if you wait more than 10 hours, you will have to sand it again. Now I hate sanding and unnecessary work, so I try to knock out all the coats on the same day so that I don't have to do that extra step in between. But after you have two coats on, it should be good to go. However, I'm very cautious with my tanks, so I actually put a third coat on. It might be unnecessary, but I typically err on the side of caution. But regardless of how many coats you apply, you'll still need to do the final step, which is carefully examining the finished product, square foot by square foot, because you'll always have some spots that you'll need to do touch-ups on. All right, so we got all the coats on of the pond shield. What we have here are three coats. Some people might say you can do it with just two coats. Uh, we like to do three just to be safe. Um, but hey, so we're done with the waterproofing. Water will not damage this wood now. The next step, let's get some glass in here.